Immune System Q&R is from Ann James, 1837. Hi, Dr. Bergman. Do you have any advice on how to stop reoccurring shingles? Absolutely. Um, there's a couple of reasons shingles are epidemic that we can't talk about. But when you look at shingles, it's from the herpes zoster virus that lives at the nerve root ganglion of the spine. So if there is three stressors, physical, chemical, and emotional, that can activate it. Now, in the old days, we used to have uh, little kids running around um, that would get chicken pox and reinfect, and that actually reduced the incidence of shingles. Uh, we don't have that, that population. Um, it has, has uh, rampant everywhere as it used to be. So look at the physical stress that's going to cause it. Emotional stress will cause it. So you've got to deal with the emotional stressors. And I recommend neurolinguistic programming. There's also emotional freedom technique. There's eye movement desensitization response. Just know you master your emotions, you change your physiology. So those are excellent. Healing the gut flora is huge. So when you're looking at the microbiome, that's 80 to 90% of your uh, immune system. So building the gut flora is going to be the key. And look at every medication can damage that gut flora. So find out if you are taking prescriptions, why you're taking them, and see if there's an alternative. Talk to your doctor or another healthcare professional who knows how your body works. And then look at high-dose vitamin C and L-lysine. And these two things will help your, your body's response to the environment. Also, D3 and K2 work really synergistically together. Healthy diet, look at healthy sleep. Poor sleep is a chemical stressor. So dealing with the physical, chemical, emotional stress, building that gut flora, um, then your body is going to have the greatest resistance. Not as good as it did before certain interventions. Now, question two from Tube Freak MUVA. How to reverse the virus's ability to evade the immune system? That function where the immune system cannot see or deal with an issue such as warts or genital warts. So this is the key. When you look at this, um, viruses aren't predators. They're not going after you. They're, they are parasites where if there's weakened tissue, they're going to go after it. So number one, look at a dermatomal pattern. And you can see these patterns, you know, just, just anywhere. Just Google it. Dermatome is an area of skin supplied by a specific nerve root. So if you have genital warts, okay, Look at a sacrum issues, lower lumbar issues, because if those nerves are compromised to that area, the tissue is going to be weak. If you have them on, say, your thumb or index finger, that's going to be the C6 dermatome or problem in the neck. So look at the structural component for sure. Also, look at the gut flora, okay? Because remember, these are scavengers. They're going after weak, damaged tissue. Um, gut flora is going to be healthy bacteria. Look at um, Things that can cause damage to the gut flora, such as toxic foods, processed foods, medications. And so all of those can damage the gut flora. So look at prebiotics, probiotics, fermented foods, build that. And then also look at sleep patterns. You got to change that. Okay, once you've fixed all of that stuff, then you can deal with it directly. Okay, drops of iodine on a wart will help. Hydrogen peroxide can help. But also look at the gut or the flora of that skin. Now, a lot of times people are going to use antibacterial soap with triclosan in it. Use regular normal soaps without antibiotics. And there's also a number of different products that can replace that skin flora. Because, I mean, you have staph epididymis on your skin that protects you from staph aureus, which is a bad one. So you need healthy skin flora. So make sure you're not utilizing like Clorox as cleaners or or if you are, use rubber gloves. I mean, that it just build that skin flora as well as the gut flora. And I think there's a couple of products. I think one of them is called Mother's Dirt that can help restore that skin flora. But by using regular soap that's not antibacterial, um, building the gut flora, building the skin flora, and changing the stressors, and then you could topically do iodine, hydrogen peroxide, uh, DMSO. There's going to be a lot of things that you could drop on there that will help decrease that. But building that skin flora, building resistance, building the gut will build that resistance as well. Um, question three from German Shepherd Mom 1143. 
how to prevent a histamine release from mast cells. Uh, when you look at histamines, histamines are, are your, um, they're released under tissue damage. Like if I break the cells here, histamines are going to be released. Okay, so it's part of the immune system cell. We're seeing a lot of cytokine storms. We're seeing a lot because certain medical procedures. But you don't want to prevent the histamine release. Histamines are actually responsible for regenerating tissue. So you have to have damaged tissue to have histamines released. Now, where this damage occurs uh, generally can be certain medical procedures that we can't talk about. It can be from a leaky gut. So things that damage the gut flora can negatively affect uh, the, the tissue, and then that's going to cause histamines for, to be released. And I'm, I'm telling you, I get so many patients that their skin is orange or pink, and everywhere you touch it, it turns white. Okay, that is a massive histamine response, usually from a leaky gut. Build your gut flora, okay? Prebiotics, probiotics, look at the sleep patterns. That's going to help because it's the, the histamines are released from damaged tissue and your body builds a billion cells a day. You destroy a billion cells a day. So if you have good nutrients, you're that buildup and breakdown process or oxidative stress is going to work, okay? Your, your system is going to actually function correctly. So just know that changing the sleep patterns, building the gut flora, um, get look at pre-digesting your food, such as bone broth or juicing or blending, uh, sleep patterns, all of that stuff, you're going to be able to build healthy cells faster than they break down. So it's not the histamines, it's the tissue damage. So we have to focus in on repairing the tissue. Question four. This is from Patricia Roxana Torres Vian, uh, 5101. Hello, Dr. Bergman. Our immune system responds to the consumption of the so called vegetable oils. Thank you, New in advance, for your response. Okay, the vegetable oils, it's, it's wild. If you see how corn oil is produced, it's a chemical process that's amazingly toxic. When you look at the majority of the oils that are GMO, such as uh, soy, um, a lot of corn oils GMO, that means it's been sprayed with glyphosates. So this is a toxic substance. Now, a couple of ways that these toxic oils damage your system is your arteries have mus muscles in there that constrict and dilate. Those muscles need blood supply, and that's where the vasovasorums or blood vessels that supply the blood vessels. Now, if those oils can actually clog those pores, and then that weakens the arterial wall, so then the body's going to respond by laying down cholesterol, calcium, and fibrin to protect the artery. So that's one. Plus, oil is a high-energy thing, and the body can actually convert that to triglycerides, which damage the liver and, and increase to a host of other diseases. Plus, they're uber high in omega-6 ratio. Figure disease starts at an 8 to 1 omega-6 ratio. Some of these oils are 20 to 1 ratio. So it's a toxic fat that your body doesn't know what to do with. So it damages the liver, it damages the arteries, and it damages the intestinal tract. But aside from which, if it's been sprayed with glyphosates or if it's genetically modified, it has been sprayed with glyphosates, that's a mineral chelator and an antibiotic. Yeah, that is not a food source. It should not be consumed. Um, question five from Tim Bits 5137. I've followed you and been a member of Extreme Health Academy for a good while now. I've thank you very much for your support. Thank you, God. I've used your recommendation to deep breathe to lower my hypertension, and sometimes it worked. But last time I went to see my primary care physician in June, walked a lot and deep breathed for 10 minutes, and then went into my appointment. My blood pressure is 165 over 95. That's important. And again, I got a little warning and embarrassment. I'm 70 plus. I've been taking 12 to 14 grams of vitamin C plus two grams of L-lysine for six months now too. No prescriptions for me. Any suggestions, Dr. B? Absolutely. Okay, biggest thing is look at the difference between the systolic and diastolic. That's the pulse pressure. 40 to 60 is in the normal range. 70 and higher you got to think that the blood might not be as efficient at holding oxygen. Now, low stomach acid causes those cells to lose their electronegative charge. 
They should be like electro negative, like like two little negative magnets repelling each other. But if low stomach acid causes those cells to lose that charge, and they can start to overlap, which means they're not going to hold oxygen. So that 70 as a pulse pressure means that the blood might not be as efficient as what it should be. So bone broth, juicing, blending, um, looking at the sleep pattern changes, you know, all of those things, that's when the body regenerates. That's going to help get the raw materials in there. And dealing with the emotional stress will also help with helping that parasympathetic nervous system, that rest, digest, and repair, get into a good balance. Now, when you're looking at deep breathing, hugely important, but also, I mean deep breathing while you're getting the blood pressure taken, because you got to figure it's almost impossible to get an accurate read inside of an office. A cold room, full bladder, and talking will elevate it. So, so it, that it's, there's multiple journal articles that say it's almost impossible to get an accurate blood pressure read. So really we have to, um, change that. So when you get to the office, diaphragmatic breathe 10 to 15 minutes at least, but while they're sitting there, they're getting information. Say, look, you know, I just walked here. Let me diaphragmatic breathe for a little bit so you can get an accurate read. And then you will see that pulse pressure drop more than likely as long as you're addressing, you know, the healthy diet nutrients and, and for juicing, apples, carrots, beets, and celery. Why those four? Because you got blood filters, kidneys, lungs, liver, and, uh, and apples have malic acid to help the kidneys. Carrots turn into beta carotene to hurt the lungs, help the lungs. The beets help the liver detox. It turns your poo and pee red, which is scary. And the celery is fantastic for minerals. And then get up to three to four bowel movements a day and you're going to be good to go. You're going to like that. Thank you for the questions. God bless you.